Welcome to the Drunk Linux User. I'm Len. I am the Drunk Linux User. And it's a beautiful day. The windows are open and you can hear the air conditioners whining away in the background. But that's all right. We're here for other kinds of tech. And one of the things I want to point out very quickly before I change over to the other desktop system that I'm using, uh, I'm currently using Manjaro with GNOME. And I have found out that there is something very unusual about using Wayland, uh, something different from what I was used to with OBS before. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Now, this is the panel or the application OBS. This allows me to record my videos for you. And so as I you know move this around, you can see all that crap going on in the background. Okay. Before, I couldn't have my picture up here in the corner and show you the desktop at the same time. That's been fixed. Good. That's wonderful. But there's another problem, and I'm not the only one having this, by the way. When you go into settings and you go into hotkeys, you can see that I have set up for recording to start number pad key number five and to stop number six. And... When I want to change my scenes, I go from number pad one to number pad two. Okay. When you go over to Wayland, and I'll get there in just a second, those options don't stick. They don't work. So what I have to do is I have to throw this little panel over here to another monitor, which is actually my TV, and, um, and relegate it over there. So if you see me kind of like looking over here for a second, it's because I'm just trying to get this to work so anyway I'll be back in just a minute to show you what that settings just give you a little heads up again hotkeys start recording and recording okay I'll be back in just a minute thanks for hanging in there I'm now on Wayland and you're going to see some changes here uh, for example going back over to the OBS I have to add this little guy right here because with Wayland you have to select a monitor so we're selecting the ViewSonic which is the one I'm going to be using okay so far so good but then we run into that problem again and I'm just going to show you right here you can see I am on Wayland windowing system is Wayland okay you can see when I go to settings and I go to hotkeys bring that over here Start recording is not listed. And if I pr try to put anything in there, it just kind of boogers everything up for the X window system. So what I have to do at the moment, I'm just going to cancel all this because hotkeys are virtually of no use to me at this point, is I throw, whoops, I almost threw the whole thing away, didn't I? Throw this over to the other monitor way the hell over there. And this way I can just keep it out of the way. I can still record. And when I need to change windows uh, or the scenes over, I'm going to have to do it manually. And that's not that big of a deal, but it's just sort of annoying. Annoying because Wayland's actually come a long way and it works really good with GNOME and it's working really good with Manjaro. Why am I using Manjaro and why am I using GNOME? I'm testing it out. I'm just taking a look and trying to give you guys some information to pass along so far it's really really good and I do enjoy it so since we're on the right screen we're gonna to go to the right program so I'm gonna to have to come up here and we're gonna restore all of our pages and the first thing I want to talk about today is Microsoft <laughs> um, I feel bad for the people who are having problems and struggling with Windows 11 and that's an honest to God sentiment uh, apparently they're having some problems with colors rendering properly and it's uh, showing right here that after installing Windows 11 some image editing programs might not render colors correctly or certain HDR displays. This is frequently observed with white colors which should display in which could display in bright yellow or other colors. That's a problem. Uh, the company is working on a patch to resolve the issue and estimates that it will have it ready by the end of January 2020. 22. So we're looking at about maybe a month from now. Maybe. Workarounds are not available at the time of writing. 
Users affected by this may be able to switch to another image editor if they are affected by the issue or switch monitors. Not everybody can do that, by the way, which is another option to work around the issue at the time of writing. And this is because a lot of the companies out there haven't exactly gotten either the information necessary to write their drivers and such for Windows 11, or they've opted not to for whatever reason. Um, the issue has only been confirmed to affect Windows 11 devices. Windows 10 devices are not affected by the issue, according to Microsoft. I have a workaround. Um, maybe now's a good time to try to spin up one of those um, live thumb drives of a Linux system and seeing if you can go ahead and print. You can either do it off the thumb drive and use it as a system, or you can actually set up a virtual machine within Windows and see if maybe you can run it and use it properly from there. Give it a shot. Heck, if you're using something like um, GIMP or Inkscape and you're being affected by this, it's available in Linux. Go ahead, give it a shot, see if you can use it. So that's my pitch for Linux for today. And again, I do feel bad for the uh, Windows people. It's it's not an easy thing to have to go through, especially if you're working on a production machine. You have specific software you need to run. Um, Here's something new. It's called the Maui Kit, and it's kind of developed uh, around the QT framework. And I do believe that this is part of uh, the KDE systems. And what they're doing is is they're making something available for uh, cross-platform. It's a way of being able to run off a computer, tablet, phone, and it's all going to look identical. You can run the same apps on each one of these. It's cross-platform, as I mentioned, and it's uh, supposedly a fast way of being able to turn your work around as well. So if you're a developer and you're curious, they're starting out with this. It's not exactly you know 100% up to speed yet, but it's something you might want to tinker around with. Um, in their blog, you can kind of see some of the pictures that, uh, that they're showing of how these things are looking between systems. And let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here to see if it's got a better picture in there. And of course you can't click on the picture apparently. Uh, maybe we can do this one. Nope, we can't. Anyway, Maui. Uh, it does remind me a lot of GNOME in some respects. And it has been also said that it looks a little bit like Mac OS. So it's kind of a blending of the two or maybe something that they're trying to come up with that will maybe eventually change down the road but this is where we're at with that uh, they do currently have some applications available for the Maui systems and I'll leave all these links up for you so that you can take a look and just see you know if it's something that you're interested in see the here's here's uh, their their music app and apparently this can run on computers tablets and phones sort of like a one-size-fit-all if if Google Chrome could be Maui Maui would be Google Chrome or something like that um, for those who are interested there's a new beta for LibreOffice it's 7.3 RC1 RC stands for release candidate one it's available for testing and they're supposed to have much better improvements with import and export to Microsoft Office, Doc, DocX, Excel, SX, and PPTX, which is always a good thing. If you want to play with it, go ahead and download off from their website, which is going to be LibreOffice.org. It's a little windy out right now. <laughs> All right, so that is something to play around with if you're interested. And uh, bring that back up. How to fix broken packages. If you're on an app system or if you're working on uh, Fedora or if you're working which uses DNF or if you're using the uh, Pac-Man system in Arch, sometimes you get a little hung up. This is a really good article. It discuss the different ways that you can fix broken packages in the app system, for example. And DPKG locks, things like that, Red Hat. I'll leave this link up for you as well. So, here's the arch. Got a lot of stuff in there pretty quick. I really do hope that 
the developers of OBS or Wayland. I'm not really sure whose fault this or whose ball this court is in. Right. Okay. So I hope they get that fixed because I like using the keyboard shortcuts to be able to go from one to the other. So as I peek over to the other monitor over here and go back over to my other scene. <laughs> Remember our words of wisdom, folks. Don't drive drunk. Don't drink and drive. Don't go to eBay or Amazon all buzzed up thinking you're going to buy the coolest stuff because you probably won't. Bottoms up. Later, dudes. Boy, it is a beautiful day outside. Beautiful. Wish you were here. In your own place. <laughs>